Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Cherry Garden, and I am a journalist, an actress, overall media personality from Kingston, Jamaica, and I am living here in Atlanta, Georgia. Today, we're going to take a deeper look or a holistic approach to fighting corona. And we are going to take a sit down with none other than Dr. Elmore Alexander. Let's tell you a little bit about Dr. Alexander. He is a biocellular medicine expert and co founder of SmartPlex ATL. Now, this practice is dedicated to anti aging, life extension, and rejuvenation. So, biocellular medicine focuses on stimulating the body's own internal mechanisms to regain function, restore youthfulness, and promote rapid, complete healing. Now, Dr. Alexander, who we're about to speak to, he holds multiple certifications for advanced therapies and is a board certified and is board certified in osteopathic medicine as well as MD training. So I am excited to jump into this interview with none other than Dr. Alexander. Dr. Alexander, Dr. A, as they call you for short. <laughs> are you live with us right now? Hello, Cherry. How are you? This is really a pleasure being with you. Uh, I've heard so much about you. We've had a chance to talk before, and uh, I'm really excited to spend some time with you. Great to have you here, and shout outs to Atlanta Black Chambers for hosting this interview, too. Absolutely. It's a <laughs> wonderful organization, and if people don't know about the Atlanta Black Chambers, please check it out. It is a very progressive organization, and they're doing a lot in the community to not only help the communities, but the businesses within the community as well. So. Awesome, awesome. I see, wait, one moment. There we go, I had to mute the audio on the other film. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and dig in. I wanted to find out, well, I, I read a little brief about your, about SmartFlex and your background. How, what has the journey been like since Corona has really infiltrated the US? I mean, you've had to, probably closed your doors for a period of time. And what has that journey been like for you during this time? Well, just like everyone else, I mean, we're, we're suffering from um, some of the, the backlash of the, the virus being here and not being prepared. Uh, you know, definitely uh, there was enough notice for the U.S. to be prepared, but, but they did not do what they needed to. And so a lot of us are, are needing to revamp what we do. And you know, I was really into the aesthetics part of things. Um, those procedures are not really what we consider essential. So we've been putting those on hold. And um, what we've been doing now is focusing on those procedures that we can do that will help people to boost their immune system. Because if you think about it, this is where the war is going to be won. Mm -hmm. This virus. Right now, if you look at those individuals who are actually becoming ill, it is directly a result of them having some type of weakness within their immune system, meaning that their bodies can't fight the virus. And if you can go ahead and you can boost that area, make it more efficient, make it so that it will fight not only bacteria, but uh, viruses as well, then you now have the opportunity to have a body that is not going to succumb to this virus. And so that's what we're doing now is we're really focusing a lot on helping the community, our individuals within in the community to be ready to fight. Fantastic. Now, you said that you typically focus on the aesthetic aspect, but it talks a lot about, even in your bio, the cell rejuvenation aspect of things. So what are some of the first steps that you would suggest a person do um, to prevent or even if you were to start feeling a little bit ill, what would you say should be done? I think we, what I'd like people to do is realize that the majority of the immune system is actually within the GI tract. And I know that sounds so strange. And when I say that, you know, they're going, what do you mean it's inside the GI tract? Well, the GI tract is actually uh, the largest organ of immunity or that is involved in the immune system within the body. It's the largest organ. It is a culmination of not only our cells functioning, but we live in harmony as a community 
with these, what we call a microbiome, which is bacteria, viruses, protozoa. They live in and on us. And there's like 100 trillion on the entire body itself. Now, when you look at the GI tract, it houses about 80% of all of that microbiome. And they secrete substances and they make substances that assist our body in getting strong. For instance, some of the bacteria make vitamin K. Other ones make um, hormones. They also make neurotransmitters that communicate with the brain. There is a system that is so sophisticated that the brain has a two-way communication, a direct communication with the bowel and these bacteria and what they're doing inside of our bowel. And our brain tells the gut what it needs and the gut is telling the brain what it needs. So this is not a very simple system and, it, and there is this, like I said, there's this unique relationship and communication between the bowel and the brain. So now having said that, how does the immune system come in, okay? The immune system deals with inflammation. And there's a lot of activities that we engage in that will cause the body to have this inflammation. And when I say inflammation, let's just make it real simple. It's like heat, it's like fire. It's like when you, when you hit your leg and you see swelling and it's redness and it hurts. That, also, that process also happens inside of you. And we have to control that. If we don't control it, then most of our immune system will go towards putting out those fires. And when a bacterial infection like COVID comes in, you won't have any reserve to fight it. And that's what's happening a lot with the older people. But it's also happening a lot with younger people because they're not taking care of one, the microbiome, and two, the immune system. So when we start talking about what can we do to make our cells function properly and get the microbiome to function in our, on our behalf. Now we have to start talking about all the things that, that allow you to have a great functioning body. So. And that's starting with the GI tract, basically with what you intake. What you intake. Okay. Intake that microbiome healthy. <laughs> all right. Because, all right. So let's, Let's look at some of the foods, all right? We all have heard of GMO, genetically modified foods. Mm -hmm. And so how does that affect the microbiome? Why is everybody so upset about it? Because the GMOs, as you know, no one eats them and then all of a sudden they just die. So, right. okay. Like so there must be something that the scientists have found out and they figured out that these GMOs are bad for us because otherwise there wouldn't be all this information and all this research on the GMOs. What the GMOs do is they actually go in and the good bacteria that protect us, they deactivate a lot of those bacteria and they destroy a lot of them. They kill a lot of them. And that allows the bad bacteria, which we call pathogens, to take over inside the body. So even though you may be feeling like you have a lot of, um, that, that you're, you're healthy, there may be a lot of signs that you're not. So some of the signs that you would look for is fatigue, um, especially like mid-afternoon fatigue. Um, oh. Inability to sleep properly, okay? So when you wake up in the morning, you haven't, um, you don't feel refreshed. Mm -hmm. uh, the quickness of your brain, how quickly you, you think about things, the clarity, that fogginess that you have. All of these can be associated with not only hormones that we may be making, but also the microbiome. They contribute to all of those processes. Like I said, the lack of sleep. So there's two things going on with sleep. One is we need to make sure that we go to bed and get sleep, but the other is we want to make sure we have restful sleep. And one of the aspects, it's only one of the aspects, one of the aspects is how the microbiome is functioning. And if you have a lot of pathogens that are in there, then you're going to have... Um, an inability to be able to absorb nutrients through the GI tract, but you're also going to have an inability to be able to exchange properly the toxic materials that you need to get rid of out of the body. So your body starts to hang on to things that it shouldn't. So you're saying that the microbiome in the GI tract is going to influence the immune system? They're directly involved in the immune system. They, they actually, 
there's many aspects of it, but one main aspect is they secrete chemicals that keep other bacteria in check. So we need these bacteria in order to live. We need the viruses in order to live because they contribute a lot to the health of our bodies. When we start to destroy the good bacteria and good viruses, then the body starts to malfunction. Sometimes it's very slow malfunctions where you might see maybe cancer cells may come up. Maybe you'll see growths that come up. You might have indigestion. Uh, one of the compounds that the, the bacteria kind of help with is serotonin, which calms you down. So you may find that your mood is off. So the microbiome is, we can't live without it. If we, just, if we sterilize all of the bacteria and viruses within our bodies, we will die. We need them in order to live. Oh, right. yes. Yes, there's, there's 100 trillion, 100 trillion that live, and there's about maybe 5,000 different species of these 100 trillion bacteria and viruses that live on our skin and inside. We know we have yeast there, right? Because uh, you probably heard some people getting yeast infections. They may have like athlete's foot or women may get these internal yeast problems. Mm -hmm. They're always there, but we keep them under control and we keep them in check with other bacteria and viruses that secrete chemicals to keep them from overgrowing. But then when you take like antibiotics, yes. and all of a sudden you get a yeast infection. Why is it? Because you're killing all the good bacteria that were secreting the chemicals to keep those funguses and those, those yeast under control. So then we take something to try and kill the yeast and we hope that we can get everything back in track. But then there's a lot of people that you know, they have these recurrent problems, recurrent problems. And that's because they don't replace the good bacteria. That's the first phase. Then the next phase is to feed those bacteria those things that they need in order so that they can become very strong. So a lot of times what we do is we feed them the things that the pathogens can start growing again. So what are some of the things that the pathogens like? How about sugar? The pathogens love sugar. So the bad bacteria love sugar and that's what make you, makes you crave more sugar is that those pathogens actually feed on those simple sugars. Okay. But if we come back and we do something like sea moss, and you're from the islands. Yeah. You know, about the sea moss, okay? Yeah. Uh, and traditionally, sea moss was used for male vitality, and that's what they're using it for. But then they found out that sea moss has about 93, 96 different yeah, minerals and vitamins nice. within yeah. that moss. And yeah, so it is a superfood. So what I'm trying to do with the different And foods. we also found out that it feeds the good bacteria. It actually helps the microbiome by feeding the good bacteria so it can get strong and begin to get its place back and check the bad bacteria. So, you understand. so when you say sea moss now, um, a lot of people would put sugar or, or maybe condensed milk or something in there to sweeten it. Now is that counteracting? Are we then feeding the bad bacteria by sweetening the sea moss or do we need to make sure that we don't take any, don't intake anything that has sugar or sweetness to it. Okay. I love the way you think. I love the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few uh, places that I've gone to that um, serve sea moss, like Jamaican restaurants, who understand that concept. And they've taken out the whole milk, and they've taken out the sugar, and they're sweetening it differently. Because they understand that, that that is probably counteracted to what you're trying to do with it. But a lot of the places traditionally use condensed milk and they put a little sugar in there, uh, add a little nutmeg. Nutmeg is good. And, and so yes, it, it is counteracting what they're actually trying to do. Um, and for a lot of people, when I make it, I don't use any of the, um, the milk uh, unless I use coconut milk and I don't use any sugar at all. I don't sweeten, I just use um, nutmeg if I'm gonna sweeten it or if I'm gonna give a little flavor or I'll add um, a little vanilla to it maybe. You know, so I add flavors to it. Okay. But that's an excellent question, yes. <laughs> so when, when making the sea moss, and for those of us who don't know about sea moss, because yes, you did reach out to the fact that I'm Caribbean, so we're familiar with it, but what about people that don't know? What is sea moss? Right. It's, it's an actual moss that grows in the ocean, okay? And 
There are two different types. There's one that grows more in the Caribbean area, sort of a yellow looking. And then there's this traditional we call Irish moss. Now everybody, they, they use those names interchangeably, but there's one that is more out into the Atlantic area, closer to Ireland uh, and up near, I guess, Maine. It grows a little different, it looks a little redder. It's a little harder to clean, but they say all the experiments have been done with that. All the studies have been done with that variety and not the, the one that comes from the Caribbean islands. Um, but when they look at the content, they're similar. They're very similar. So each one is, is, is very, um, it's a very potent superfood for the body. It's one of the ones that I recommend for sure. Uh, another would be maca, which is a type of root that is a superfood, uh, and it also will, will serve as a probiotic to the body for the, or as a prebiotic for the probiotics. The probiotics are the bacteria. So let's get this right. The probiotics are the bacteria that we put back in, and the prebiotics are the, the things that the good bacteria will feed off of so that they can start to grow and multiply again and serve us well. And are there any other, so how do you spell maca, by the way, so people can Google it? M-A-C-A, -A. and you'll see all types out there. There's black maca, there's red maca, there's brown maca. Doesn't matter which one you, uh, you obtain. They may have a few different um, nuances about them, but there is a difference in cost. You don't have to buy the most expensive one to get the results, that's for sure. Okay. So we've touched on sea moss and maca. Is there anything else that you would suggest for those particular probiotics in the GI tract? I, th I think those are two, you know, I don't want to confuse people. And I think when they start to learn about it and they need a good source, I'm coming out with a source that will help to be able to lead people in the right direction. Because one of the things that I want everyone to know when we're out here, that just because something works for one person doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Because each of our bodies needs something different. And one of the things that um, is really affecting the GI tract and probably our immunity, and for sure our immunity, is a lack of vitamin D. Uh, I was so proud of Tyler Perry this week. He put out a tweet where he was talking about that that was probably one of the main things why African Americans were succumbing to this virus and so many of us were dying from it was that it, was, it may be from a lack of vitamin D. And, and I don't know if I'm gonna go that far but he may not actually be far off because when I actually check the vitamin D levels in African Americans, I find that they're very, very low. Um, now, when you go to your doctor, and this is good information, you have a pen, everybody write this down. When you go to your physician and you ask them to do a vitamin D level on you, uh, a lot of times they will be hesitant. You know, they need to know that, that your vitamin D was actually low prior to you coming in. I don't know why that is because when we test people, the minimum number that you should have in your blood is, is a vitamin D, what we call D25 level, it is about 33. That's the level. I have African Americans coming in and other people as well, but they're running in the single digits, like seven, nine, many of them might be 10, 12, 16. This is not unusual. Well, it's not even active until it gets to be 33. And what's important about this is vitamin D3, or vitamin D, I should say, vitamin D, is not only a vitamin, but it's the only vitamin that's also a hormone. And hormones communicate between systems. We need them. Just like your thyroid hormone and your estrogen, your progesterone, testosterone, they communicate between organ systems. Very, very important. And vitamin D is one of those major factors that not only a cofactor in many biological um, uh, processes, but it also is a hormone. And so why is it important? Or what kinds of things is important in? Mood, okay? We see this a lot in people who live up north. When there's no sun, a lot of times there's a lot of depression, especially I, up north. I thought that was called uh, the SAD, was that syndrome, it, it's abbreviation is, syn is SAD, which is like a, a syndrome that occurs when there's when it, during the winter time, seasonal, seasonal uh, affective disorder. There you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. <Okay. laughs> right. Well, okay. So um, that's great. I like the way you think. Okay. So now we have seasonal affective disorder. 
the question that we always we don't ask and the way that we've learned to treat things in America. And this is what's going on with COVID right now. And this is why I'm on um, on point trying to get out here and get this message message out, because as soon as we name something, the first thing we want to do is we want to give a medication to treat it. Mm-hmm. We want to give something for the symptom. OK, so if you have uh, depression, then they want to give you an antidepressant. But the problem may be in your GI tract where you're not absorbing enough of L-tryptophan, which turns into serotonin. And most of the serotonin is not made in the brain where you feel depression. Most of it's actually made in the gut. And it also helps with GI motility, meaning that how you um, deal with constipation. So when you're when your bowel is not very mobile, you might you, you may become constipated. So we have to start to think about things differently. Yes, we have this seasonal affective disorder, but why is it? What was the underlying problem? The underlying problem was as the sun went down, we didn't get as much. You're not making the vitamin D. The vitamin D is directly involved in mood. It also is involved in sleep, so you're not sleeping as well. When you do sleep, you're not getting refreshed sleep, and you start to get more depressed and you have this seasonal effect disorder. Then as soon as the sun comes back out, you start getting more sun, you start to feel better, because the whole body's becoming energized. Now what they're suspecting is that maybe with African Americans, because it's also involved in the immune system, it's not at a high enough level even when the sun comes out. Because in order for you to make vitamin D, you have to have maximal exposure of the trunk of the body. Whoa, right. did not know that. Right, and then you know when we go outside, we're mostly covered up, right? So you get a little bit on your face, you get a little bit on your arms when you drive. Yeah. You know, so you you know one arm's a little darker than the other, the one that's on the window side where you're driving. Um, you know, even when, like I cycle, even when we go outside and we cycle, I have these cycling shorts on, I have a reflective jersey on, I have a helmet, a bandana, sunglasses, gloves. I'm not getting much sunlight. I'm getting a little bit on my, my forearms and a little bit on my lower legs. I have socks on, shoes. So you're not getting much sunlight even though you're outside. So you're not making as much vitamin D as you should. So what you need to do is, one, during the winter months and until you get your levels back up, Everyone write this down because your doctors are going to tell you something different. All right. You want to take vitamin D3, 2000 milligrams, morning and night. Very important. Morning and night. So that's 4000 milligrams a day, 2000 in the morning, 2000 at night. If you take 10,000 milligrams once a day, which they have tablets out there like that, or 5000 milligrams once a day, it is not going to work or work the same you're gonna still get half the dose because it's a carrier system. And once you load them all up with all your vitamin D, it takes off and what you don't take in gets excreted. Sure. So you're taking in more than what you need and, you're, and you think you're getting something and it's just getting excreted. But when you come back again in the afternoon and you load that receptor, those receptors again, you get in twice the amount and you're gonna get your levels up faster, okay? And if you do that along with getting some sunlight, you're going to get it up even faster. And now this vitamin D is what you're saying is going to help. Is it going to help the probiotics, which then in turn help the immune system? Or how does that vitamin D go into helping to fight Corona? (laughs) So vitamin D is in a whole nother system. Okay. Okay. So we, we have... We have our immune system there, but it, it functions in a whole other part of the body. And again, like I said, it's a hormone, so it's communicating between all the different systems as to what they need to be doing. And one of the things that is so sensitive about the body, we don't realize, if one hormone is off, then probably all the hormonal systems are off as well. They're off just a little bit, and they're not functioning at the peak level that they should be in order to take care of you. So vitamin D is a cofactor in a lot of processes as well, meaning that you have a biological process going on and it will need to plug in a certain vitamin in order for that process to work at 100 percent and vitamin d is one of those those things that we need it also is needed in in, um making strong bones right you've heard of that strong bones we think of bones but it's also tendons you know as we get older a lot of times people will notice that they have more aches around their joints that may be the first sign that you're becoming 
vitamin D deficient is that your tendons start to ache and you don't know why. Oh. Or when you exercise, you just can't recover as well. You feel sore the next day, you know, around your joints. That may be one of the first signs that your bones are actually starting to lose some density as well. So we must have vitamin, vitamin D on board. Very, very, very important. Now there's some other things too when we start talking about bone strength. There's, there's a lot of other things as well. But we're, we're talking about the immune system right now. Right. Yeah. And you know, you had mentioned to me something that you called a visual that you kind of wanted to illustrate to our guest today <laughs> regarding like fire stations. Oh. About that again. Right. Okay, so this is a visual that I try to give everyone when, I'm, when they're thinking about their immune system and how it works and why it may not be working in one person or another or why you can't look at someone who looks like they're very healthy, they go to the gym, they work out, but they have very bad dietary habits or they don't sleep well or they may drink too much and you go, but they look fantastic you know I mean the women look at them they got these big traps and they got the nice V shape and they're walking around but this is the guy that gets corona he gets blood clots and he leaves here at 35 or 40 years of age and this is happening more and more you're not hearing those numbers because they're trying to to suppress those that information but it is happening and a lot of especially younger men are getting blood clots after the corona seems to be getting better. It's affecting them. So you ask this question, how does it work? Think of your body as a community that has to be taken care of. And one of the things that we need within our community to be able to keep fires down, all right, are uh, these fire stations. So let's imagine that we have 10 fire departments and you, um, you take in GMO products and one fire engine has to go out and deal with the fact that we caused some inflammation due to the GMOs and you're taking in sugar so we sent another one out and you had you know it's Cinco de Mayo and you had about three margaritas you know because you were trying to celebrate with everybody and your liver now has to detoxify all of this your body's on fire you've killed some of your bacteria and so now you release another um, fire engine out there so now you know we only got seven left okay on top of it you've been under a lot of stress, maybe you've had a divorce or you, um, you had a, a love relationship that may be stressed out or your job may be giving you problems or because of Corona, uh, there's some money problems and you don't know if your business is going to make it. And so now you dispatch another one or two fire engines. So now you're up to five and um, you're not getting proper food. So, you know, it, you've been sitting around watching a lot of television, you haven't been exercising. And so you're getting more inflammation aside because you're not getting these toxins out. You're not cleansing your body. And before you know it, you got about seven of your uh, fire engines out. So you got a seven alarm fire going. Corona comes along. Well, let's add one more in. Okay. So that's the average person. Mm -hmm. Now we look at the person that actually has a few more problems. They have diabetes or high blood pressure or rheumatoid arthritis or even asthma. They had asthma as a child, but they've been doing better as an adult, and, but they still have some of the remnants of asthma. And it's, it happens to be springtime. So the pollen's out, you have a little bit more congestion, and so now you send out another one or two fire departments. So now you're up to eight, okay? And corona comes along. And corona is a very bad player. It's highly contagious, it's very infective. When it gets inside of you, it's gonna multiply like crazy if you don't have something to keep it in check. And, but it need, you need about four fire engines, four line of fire to go and take care of COVID. But you already have 80 of your engines out. So you're two engines short. So sure. now COVID is multiplying like crazy and next thing you know, you're headed to the hospital. You get to the hospital and you have, um, some support, but you keep getting worse. So they put you in intensive care unit, your breathing capacity keeps going down, and they put you on one of these ventilators that they've been talking about. So now you're on a ventilator, and your body still isn't responding enough. So they give you one of these cocktails with the uh, hydroxychloroquine and the azithromycin medication, 
and a little bit of vitamin C. They don't give you enough vitamin C. They give you a little bit of vitamin C. And your body doesn't respond enough. If your body can't respond, if your immune system can't respond and help these medications and help the, the support that they're giving you with the breathing, then the body gets overtaken by the virus, you get septic, your organs start to shut down, and you die. And so yesterday we had uh, 1,200 deaths reported. And this morning they have uh, estimated that there's going to be as many as 3,000 deaths per day uh, by the next month. By the time and we get the to the next you're month. you're talking about are mostly Georgia, because we have people from other states as well. Yeah, no, this is, this is across the this is across country. They're going to be talking about 3,000 3, deaths per day, which would be 90,000 deaths per month they expect to be happening. And this is coming from the universities who are actually doing the, the um, epidemiology and they're doing the extrapolations. They're coming up with these, these models to try and figure out what is happening because now they've opened up everything and people have gotten so lax because they feel good. When in actuality, you may have several fire engines that are out and all you need in order to get sick is to get a good dose of this virus. So one of the reasons we're telling people to use the mask is to reduce the amount of transmission or the amount of virus that gets in the air to be breathed. Now, I don't want people to think that when they're in a car, they're going to breathe it. You have to be within a certain distance of someone if they have this, this coronavirus. What happens is the mask will block some of it if you're breathing out, if you're a carrier, and it will also block you from breathing it in. And it is the load. The load is, when they talk, talk about a viral load, it is the dose, how many virons that you're actually inhaling and taking in that will determine whether or not you will get sick or not. It also is in conjunction with your immune system. So who does COVID really like? COVID doesn't like weak people. You know, we, <laughs> no, it doesn't like weak people because weak people it's going to take them over very quickly. They don't have much of an immune system. So older people are, is not a good vector for COVID because it has a very short life span in someone that it goes in within a few days, takes over the body, and the person expires. At that point, COVID is finished because what we're doing now is we're making everyone cremate the bodies. And so that would destroy the virus. And someone with a very strong immune system, COVID can't replicate, it can't multiply. So it comes in, your immune system sees it, it attacks it, it stops it. But it's everybody in between that are perfect. You know, the people who are eating too much meat, who are partying too much, who think that COVID is not an issue, who are transmitting it back and forth, they're great carriers. They're wonderful carriers of this disease. And if they inhale enough, it can overcome their own defenses. And so that's when we start talking about the second wave. Right now, we're not even out of the first wave. And the, and the, and the numbers are still going up. So when it finally starts going down, and then it comes back again, that's when we really have to look out. So people need to start working on this concept of getting your immune system together right now because this is your only defense when you start thinking about the vaccine i want everybody to think about this okay dr alexander will not be taking this vaccine when it first comes out now i'm not going to tell older people who are high risk maybe not try but we have had vaccines in the past that have gone through all of the rigorous testing that usually takes about 18 months to two years to make sure that, that vaccine is safe they have now moved it down to 12 months to 18 months. And the latest is we may have one by January. That will be seven months. That will be seven months. So there is no way to be able to test and make sure. And a great example of this is hydroxychloroquine. Mm -hmm. Everyone said that was such a great drug. And the physicians, of course, were saying, we need to go slow. You need to be careful. It can only go to certain people. This stuff is very dangerous. We knew the history of this drug. But politicians came in and said, what do you have to lose? And we lost some lives. 
And of those people that we didn't lose lives, they lost organ function. They became deathly ill. And some of them have permanent problems from these medications. So you can't just jump at anything. But one of the things that we do know is that high dose vitamin C also boosts the immune system. And if you take it intravenously in the vein, it will boost almost immediately. You will get a boost. And we're not boosting with small doses. We're boosting with 10 to 20, 25 grams of vitamin C. You can't take that much orally. You cannot take that much and you can't absorb that much. What you can do for yourself to try and help out is you can take vitamin C 2,000 milligrams three times a day. That's 6,000 milligrams. And see if your body will tolerate that. Not everyone will even be able to tolerate that. They will have GI problems from that. But that will get you moving in the right direction. But if you do it intravenously and you take a boost and then come back and do it orally, and this is something that we specialize in our office, it will give you a boost. Oh, because I was wondering where does a person get vitamin C intravenously? So that's something where they would have to go to a facility like SmartPlex. Right. And are stores open for that kind of process now? Yeah, we're, we're open for that, but you know, we, we are following a lot of protocols because we disinfect between everyone. We don't have people just in the office just lingering and loitering around. Um, we, we make sure that we try to keep the place very clean because this thing is not gone and the numbers are going up. So I know a lot of people are tired and they don't want to listen to the news, but as we speak, the numbers are doubling because we are now more social. People are going back to restaurants. They're um, in the parks and they're, they're on the beaches. This thing, <laughs> and the numbers are just escalating and the government's trying to suppress the numbers, but there are a few uh, responsible organizations out there that are actually collecting the data. And if you listen to some of the better news stations, you will get some real data. You don't have to sit there and listen to all the misery, but you do need to know what you're up against. This thing is not gone. And we have not really peaked yet. Uh, it's dangerous. Wow. Um, so thus far, just to recap for those who have possibly just logged in, um, we've talked about sea moss, Irish moss, and how that can have antiviral capabilities and boosting the probiotics and the GI tract. We've talked about maca, M-A-C-A, which is another recommendation that you had. And vitamin D, I did see a question from one of our viewers here asking if you had a particular vitamin D that you recommended uh, that can be, that, uh, pro probably that could be found in stores or over the counter, right. what would you recommend? Those are, those, that's a great question because there are a lot of vitamins that don't have a lot of great activity. And um, there are a few sources out there that will tell you uh, if the vitamin that you've chose is a, a very good one. There is a uh, a site is called Consumer Lab, like Consumer Report, Consumer Lab. It does cost to belong to it, but, um, and I, I do, a lot of times I will go ahead and I will um, print some information in regards to that. But um, vitamin D doesn't seem to be one that we have to worry a lot about. If you find one, it's probably going to be de decent. It's going to be in the range. Uh, some of the other vitamins you do have to worry about, like a multivitamin. Uh, a lot of the multivitamins, one of the problems that they have with them is that even though it may have all the ingredients in it, it does not dissolve at the right part of the GI tract in order for all of the minerals and vitamins to be absorbed. And so you're wasting, yeah, you're wasting your money. Uh, I hate to plug anybody, but you know, I want people to know where there's a good one at a good price. Um, Costco has a brand, it's called Kirkland's, and they have a multivitamin. It was tested against 50 other multivitamins out there, and it came in number three, but it came in number one, it's best value. So uh, it's an excellent one. I actually take it because uh, it gives you a variety of different things that you need, but then I take other things too. So what other things would I take? I would take things that would actually help to calm down my system, to calm down some of these fires inside, right? So turmeric, I know a lot of people hear about turmeric, is a great one for that. Uh, if you're going to take turmeric, take turmeric with either olive oil, black seed oil, Maybe not black seed oil because black seed oil is very expensive. You're only going to take a little bit of that. Uh, but olive oil, maybe MCT oil, or take it with black pepper. Okay. Some of the products come with bioprene, which is the active ingredient in black pepper. 
you need that in order for turmeric to be absorbed. So you need either an oil, you have to take it with an oil, like an olive oil, uh, or um, black pepper. And when you say turmeric now, are you referring to ground turmeric, the fresh root turmeric, or a supplement that's in a capsule? What are you recommending here? Okay. Well, I know most people are probably looking for a supplement. Myself, I actually go to farmer's market, I get the root, and I put it in my smoothies in the morning. Yeah. So uh, that's the way I take it. Okay. And, but I do put a little bit of oil. I put a little MCT oil, which comes from coconut oil, or you can use coconut oil. That's in my smoothie uh, every morning with my turmeric. And I put a little bit of black seed oil, uh, but just a little bit because black seed oil does not taste good. It is horrible. Uh, but it is a great anti-inflammatory, antioxidant oil, and uh, it helps with um, cellular activity. So uh, those are great to take together, you know, and it does calm the system down. So... And when you said black, you said black seed, not flax seed, right? I'm just making yeah. sure. It's yeah, flax seed is also uh, awesome. Okay, it's another thing. Okay. But, but this is black seed, B L A C K S E E D, black seed oil. And I'm sure a lot of your listeners know a lot about it. Um, it is a wonderful oil. It's good for your skin, it's good for uh, biocellular um, mechanisms within the body. It is a great uh, oil, but you only need a little bit. It's very expensive. You put a little bit in, it should last you a long time. Put it in your smoothies. Does that bring the black pepper aspect that you were talking about to the turmeric? No, what it does is you have the oil. So you either need one or the other. Now you can put the black pepper in there if you want. A lot of the capsules that are encapsulated that have, um, they'll either have black pepper or bioprene. It's called bio, B-I-O-P-R-E-N-E. Bioprene is the active ingredient that causes or works with the turmeric to allow it to be absorbed better. So you either need that or you need some type of oil. And I use coconut oil in the morning most of the time. Sometimes I'll put a little olive oil uh, if I have a high grade olive oil. I don't like just the regular ones that are in the store. It doesn't taste as good, but the high grade oils have a little sweetness to it. And so I'll put those in my smoothies as well. Okay, so once again, for those just joining, we've covered Sea moss, the Irish moss, <laughs> antiviral aspects. You know, I just like to recap because I mean, we, we all want to make sure we have it all down. And then we covered maca, and we touched on the vitamin D, and you talked about intravenously uh, injecting vitamin C. I was new to that. I had never heard of that before. That was interesting. And um, and now we just mentioned the aspect of turmeric. Now all of these things are building the immune system so that we can have have more fire engines on reserve, right? There you go, right. So when, <laughs> when, when, and not only uh, um, COVID, you know, we, we focus a lot on COVID right now, but I have um, my mother, she lives in North Carolina, and I have an uncle that lives in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. At different times over the last month, they both got pneumonia, but it wasn't due to COVID. It was a different type of pneumonia. And we're at the end of the winter season. I mean, it's, it's already spring. So, you know, I'm not sure what's going on. You know, I was, I was feeling very blessed that it was a pneumonia. It was a, um, a uh, strep pneumonia that they, they received. So we were able to treat it with antibiotics. But uh, this COVID, when it causes pneumonia, we don't have an antibiotic for it. So that's what I'm trying to stress to people, too. There is not anything that we can give you that really, really works. Now, I know they're talking about this um, remdesivir that's out there. And um, it may or may not, and again, the words out, be that special product that we can use which will fight or treat COVID. But they're getting some reports now that they gave it to some children and it actually is causing some organ damage. So, you know, again, we're, they're, they're, they're pushing things. What we have is we have politicians, not physicians, not healthcare people, making the decisions that deal with your health care. And we have to be very careful. You know, you would not go to um, someone to do investments and their specialty was history. <laughs> you know, you just, you're just not going to do it. And yet, we're, let, we're allowing 
politicians to stand there and tell us what is good for our health. And they're taking the, the, the people who are trying to give the information and they're muzzling them and they're sidelining them. You know, and, and I'm not sure that the pharmaceutical companies aren't in on this either, because um, last week, Wednesday, it was amazing to me. Up in Detroit, they went into a physician's office. They brought the FBI and they brought Fox News with them. OK, they didn't call M MSNBC. They didn't cause call CNN. They didn't call N NPR News. You know, they had a great news story. All right. That there was a doctor who was doing something that could potentially be hurting people. And as it turned out, this physician was offering all first line responders. Intravenous vitamin C if they were um, at high risk for getting covid. OK, so they came in, in hazmat suits. Normally, you see everybody coming in the mask. They came in hazmat suits. They made a big ordeal. They uh, they went into his office. They didn't find cocaine. They didn't find marijuana. They didn't find uh, that he was writing illegal pain pills. They didn't find that he was um, dripping cleaning solutions in anybody's vein that was uh, recommended by somebody very famous. They didn't find any of that. What they found was a refrigerator with some vitamin C, and they confiscated it. And they walked out and they told everybody that the raid was very successful. But if you read down in the bottom of the article, because the physician said, how can you be doing this when it's a part of the cocktail? Vitamin C is a part of the cocktail that they give um, people who are very, very ill. When, the, when you give hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, the third part of the cocktail is high dose vitamin C. Mm -hmm. OK. So how can you shut him down if he's giving people vitamin C? So they said it was a very successful raid. But when it was all said and done, there were no arrests and no charges. They just wanted to shut him down and embarrass him. Because if people find out that vitamin C, which is not as expensive as rem remdesivir, not as expensive and not as dangerous as hydroxychloroquine to the body, if vitamin C actually works and studies are showing overseas, even in the United States, they have studies going on right now with this, with vitamin C, adding it to current regimens, and they've been saving lives with it. They find out you don't need those drugs. And that would be challenging because they're not going to be making as much money off of those. But well, wow. So... Yeah. Intravenous. I mean, if this just happened in Detroit, I mean, how do you feel about still offering that same service at your venue? Well, what I've been hearing all along is that um, they they have been talking about how great you know the medical community is when they go out there and they risk their lives, and yet they don't have personal protective um, equipment, the, the PPEs. They don't have things that are protecting them against this virus. Um, you know. When I, when I look and see that the New England Patriots about five weeks ago were able to go to China and come back with a million masks in their private plane, and mm -hmm. not another plane has gone back over to China and brought in any PPE, I don't know what's going on. But what I know is as a physician, what I am charged to do is take care of people. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm here today, is to tell people about how to take care of yourself. Because there's a lot of misinformation out there and people are being misled about what they need to be doing. And so we're all sitting back waiting for a vaccine mm -hmm. that we have no idea what it's going to do to us. We're, we're taking medications that are shutting down already weak systems mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem to be saving any lives. We have African-Americans who are 19 percent of the population, but we're over 70 percent of the cases that are dying, dying from this. And we have something as simple as vitamin C, and there's not a recommendation coming from a politician. But the politicians are opening up everything for you to do business while the numbers keep going up and African-Americans keep dying at a high rate. So when you ask me what I'm doing, I'm ready to stand out here and be an advocate for my people because somebody has to tell the truth. Somebody has to bring some honesty, some integrity, some loyalty, some some education, some um, 
respect for other people into this. Because right now, when I see beauty shops being opened up and they're not really trying to tell people how to do this, when I see restaurants opening up, barbershops opening up, and I see my people out there thinking, listening to politicians again, not the medical community. They're not listening to Dr. Fauci, who's been muzzled. They're not listening to CDC, who is saying, this is not time to do this. They're not listening to Sandy Gupta on on CNN, and he's saying, what is going on? They're listening to the politicians. They're listening to the governor of Georgia tell people that it's okay. And I'm here to tell you, it's not okay. The numbers are going up. We are sick, and you're walking around, and you don't know it. In some of the disease states, we don't even know exactly to what extent it's causing problems. But what we do know now is that it's affecting every organ system in the body every single organ system in the body. Young people are getting strokes. There are skin diseases that they're getting. They have a condition now they call co corona toe, where they have petechia, but it's not just the toe, it's all over the body. We had a, um, a young man who was a Broadway star who got corona and he lost his leg when he was getting better. He got a clots in his legs. They're getting conditions called DIC, disseminated intervascular coagulation, where the body starts to shut down because it can't coagulate very well. And you start to get these little clots all over the body. The only way to treat it is you have to take the blood out of the body and exchange it. You have to do what they call a blood exchange. So while we're walking around and we think everything's fine, it's not. You're being lied to. And the people that you should be listening to is the medical community. That's who you should be listening to. And if you're listening to anybody besides them, you are endangering yourself, your family, and everybody around you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for expressing that. I mean, what are your thoughts about the corona testing locations that have been popping up? I mean, locally here in Georgia, are those things that you think people should go and do as well? I think they should be careful when they do it. Um, I think going to a test station is probably not a bad thing to do. But, um, you know, the CDC wanting to send somebody to my house and, and, and test me. I don't know what they're bringing to my house. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, I, you know, I don't know what they're testing for and why are they coming to DeKalb County and not testing other areas of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the area as well, you know, of, of uh, Atlanta. You know, so why are you coming to DeKalb County and sending people door to door and you're not also doing it in other parts of the city? So... I get a little suspicious when I see things like this. But um, one of the things I will say about this, too, is, you know, they're looking for fo folks that have antibodies. And I think that's a great thing. If you have antibodies, this may be one thing that might help to save somebody's life. But I would not give it away. Um, there is a plasma center called Ked Plasma. They will buy your plasma from you if you have the antibodies. You know, they're selling your plasma anyway. So they're making us think that, you know, you're doing this for all these altruistic reasons. And all around us, people are making money off of us. And we need to, if you're going to do this, if you have the antibodies, I think it's an, an admirable thing to donate your blood to help somebody else. But if you're going to do it, get paid for it because they're going to turn around and sell it to the person that's receiving it. They're not giving those antibodies away free. They're selling it to them. So uh, we wouldn't know that we have the antibodies unless we go and, and get tested. Get, test, get tested. But there's several different tests. So one of them is going to tell you whether or not you have antibodies. Another one will tell you whether or not you have the antigen, which says that you have active disease now. Um, and then you have a lab test that we can tell you a little bit more about it. So, you know, the accuracy of the test, we don't know. We, you know, um, Hmm. There's so many different tests that are out there. You don't know which one you're getting. But if you feel like you're sick, you're ill, and you need to be tested, go ahead. But what I will tell you is this. More so than the test, since they're not really making the test available, because that's the way that you actually control this thing is find out where the hot spots are. You test, you find out where the hot spots are, and then you, you, um, you actively engage those areas. And then you try to quarantine them and you do certain things to make sure that they don't spread the infection. OK. They're not making those tests widely available, so we can't get the information and they're doing it on purpose because right now Korea has tests that are ready. 
eighteen dollars for the antibody test, eleven dollars for the um, the saliva test that gives you the antigen. They're ready, and those tests aren't coming into the, to the country. Ask me, I don't know why. I can't tell you why. What I can tell you is there's a lot of misinformation out there. And so again, I'm gonna go back to where we really win. Where we win is make sure your body is ready. Start reading labels. GMO products like soy. If soy is in it, 80 to 90 percent of the soy in the United States is genetically modified. Do not eat it. Now, you're going to get mad at me because soy is almost in every loaf of bread that you'll you'll purchase. There's a couple of brands out there that have um, no soy in it. Corn, high fructose corn syrup. Um, Sodas all have high fructose corn syrup in it. Um, Corn on the cob. If it doesn't say organic, organic non-GMO. Do not eat it. It is going to hurt you. We need to start being more plant based. Okay, you do not have to be a vegan. You don't have to be. I have a lot of information that that's in my book about that. Um, The book isn't quite ready yet to be out soon, but uh, there's a lot of information on that. Some of the oldest people in the world are not vegan. Okinawa, Japan, but they only eat meat once in a while. OK, but they are more plant centered, plant based. So we need to be more plant based. Um, things like orange juice have a lot of sugar in them. If you're going to make your juices, make your juice, make vegetable juice, make fruit juices. But fruit juices should be made with the with the um, the parts of the fruit, not just squeezing it. Mm. OK, because you'll get a lot of sugar from that. Uh, so you want to get the fiber with it. Um, get plenty of sleep. I have a whole section. It's a whole chapter on sleep. Sleep seems so simple, but sleep is not simple. And sleep is something to think about the same way you think about getting up in the morning and organizing your day is the same way we need to be thinking about sleep because sleep is where you repair yourself. Sleep is where your brain actually detoxifies. It has cells inside of the brain that actually detoxify. But if you do a couple of things, One, if you have lights on in your room, these cells don't function very well. So if you have a television on, you're going to sleep. The cells that detoxify your brain, they're like the lymphocytes in your in your body. It won't detoxify as well. You won't sleep as well. You won't repair and you're going to have more need for fire engines. So. The real thing right now is don't let the politicians take you out, take charge of yourself. And something that I just started that I want people to think about doing is very easy. And as a matter of fact, I, I had it on my I put it on my my Facebook today um, is everybody go out and buy one vegetable plant, a pot, find some kind of pot, get a vegetable plant. This is your first opportunity, your first step in getting yourself off the grid. OK, when we eat foods, we want to eat foods that are close to coming out of the ground as possible. Mm-hmm. Why is that? When you watch a, a, a tomato growing on a plant, you can see it growing. You know there's life in it. Right. You pluck it and you wash it and you eat it. Okay? It has a different flavor to it. And it has a life force. That life force is still going around in that tomato. And when you take it in, that life force goes into you. The same way that you give somebody your life force. When you decide that you want to be involved with them, you exchange life energy. You can feel the presence of certain people because there's something about them. You know, they love me or they care about me or they just like me. It's in foods as well. But if your food is traveling from South America for a week and it was picked too early or if they're using all kind of fertilizers in it and it's a cucumber like this, Mm -hmm. that cucumber is probably more carbohydrate than it is even vegetable. Mm. So what we need to do is even if you just start with one, just one, and all you have to do is just water it every day and it will do the rest. Just get some dirt and just water it every day. If you want to fertilize it, you'll get a little bit better. Use organic fertilizer. Okay. Don't use any pesticide. Don't use any of that dust. Don't do any of that stuff. Those things all cause inflammation within your system. Pesticides, preservatives, all of those things. You know all this information. Everybody knows this information. So what I'm telling you to do now is think about your body as a temple Mm. and that you want it to function. 
You want to be 90 years old and still independent. The people in Okinawa, they have an average age of 97 where they're still independent of all people who live to be 100 or more. They still live alone. They're still working in the fields. They're still doing their thing. We got people here 40 years old in nursing homes. Come on. We can do better than that. So that's what I'm all about, people. That's why I'm here tonight. That's what I'm trying to give you. I want you to understand that there are some people out here who are concerned about you and we need to take charge of ourselves. The first step is if you think that it's bad for you, it probably is. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this has been some amazing information. Um, and regarding the vitamin C, what do you recommend people do with that? I know you said the supplemental aspect is okay, but not as powerful. Do you think that people should probably go find a place that does intravenous? Oh, absolutely. If you're in Atlanta, you know, come see me. Uh, there's a few... Um, functional medicine doctors. If you're in another city, look for someone who is a functional medicine physician. Most of them do have uh, vitamin C. Some of them do it as a drip. I do it as a push. It only takes like five, 10 minutes. Um, I actually push it in the vein. There's another thing that you can put in there. It's called glutathione. It's one of the, the most powerful antioxidants that you can um, obtain. And you can just push it right into the vein. It only takes a minute. It doesn't hurt. We use a very small little butterfly needle and we push it in. Um, you notice the effects within the next day. You notice that you get a little boost of energy. So not only are you getting the effect of the vitamin C protecting you, you also get a little boost in your energy. And then, you know, if you're really, you know, concerned and you want to um, really go to the next step, there's, there's these vitality IVs that we can do as well. Another thing to look for is an infrared sauna. Infrared saunas help to detox you. So detoxification is a very important part of getting your body ready for um, to be able to fight you know, these diseases. You know, one last thing, because I know we're probably getting close to time here. Um, everyone needs to understand how the body works. OK, so I'm going to give you a very simple example of how the body works that you need to be patient. A lot of these things don't happen immediately, okay? Um, one is red blood cells turn over. When I mean turn over, from the time one comes in, a new one, we'll say it's born. A new cell is born, okay? To the time it dies, takes about 90 to 120 days. So that's about four months, okay? Skin cells, on the other hand, take 12 months. Organ cells, the interior of us, they take three years. So that's the organs, the blood vessels, all those things take three years. The bone takes five to seven years. So if you want a whole new body that is serving you at the best that you could possibly be, it's going to take you at least three years for you to feel like you have a whole new body. But every month you feel better. So like when you start getting new red blood cells, in two months, you actually can carry better oxygen. Okay. So you feel better. In six months, you're starting to get some, some, um, some skin cells. You're getting some organ cells. In a year, you got all new skin cells, looks beautiful, you know, beautiful skin, nice, soft, got great tone. And so, but again, it's not just the outside. It's what's going on in the inside that's going to give you the best complexion, going to give you the best energy and the best what are we talking about today? COVID, the best ability to fight, to fight. Your politicians are not going to fight for you. We do need to vote and we need to get politicians in there who are honest. OK, so elections are coming up. That's going to help you with your immune system, too, because when you can trust the people around you, you won't have as much stress. When you know they're going to work on your behalf, you won't have as much stress. So we need to make sure that we vote, that we are politically involved. Because everything we do, our environment, everything affects us inside and out. Wow. Wow. This has been an amazing interview. Thank you so much, Dr. Alexander. You've definitely dropped some amazing gems, amazing information. And uh, I guess we can mention your website is SmartPlex. 
atl.com. Yes, yes, yes. Please come see us uh, on, on the, the website. I'm posting a lot of information. You can find me on, on Facebook at uh, Dr. Elmore Alexander. Um, you know, I post, a, I post a lot of information, mostly uh, right now I'm, I'm posting some plants that I'm, I'm planting in pots. So showing people that I'm doing the pot thing too. Uh, so please consider that. And then do it with a friend so that maybe you'll do peppers, bell peppers, okay? And maybe they'll do tomatoes and you can exchange some of your food, okay? So do that, do it with me, let's do it together. You know, somebody wants to share some plants with me, I'll share some of mine with them. Um, you know, let's do this, let's get off the grid a little bit. Let's start taking care of ourselves. Let's start working together more. Let's help each other. Let's make each other accountable. You know, I'm not telling you not to drink, but if you're going out, one drink will be fine. Don't drink a lot of alcohol. And it would be better if you're going to drink, drink red wine, but not red wine from the United States. Drink red wine from countries that do not allow Roundup in their wine. Okay. Oh, and speaking of Roundup, most of the wheat, most of the wheat, so when we talk about bread, white bread, wheat bread, whatever, most of the wheat is dried using the herbicide Roundup. Wow. Yeah. And which countries don't allow Roundup? Uh, Argentina. Um, there are a few countries down in South America, but I would stay with Argentina. Um, we have uh, South Africa, Australia, Italy, France. Uh, so okay. Spain, Spain, most of the European countries, they don't believe in Roundup. They don't believe in it. It's like, don't bring us over here. Um, so, yeah, what they've done is, and so you got to watch the grapes as well, because what they've done is they've genetically modified the grapes and the vines so that when they, they crop dust with Roundup, they spray it over the entire plant. It kills all the weeds, but it doesn't kill the plant. But the Roundup does go in and it gets into the fruits. And they have found it in every variety of wine out in um, Napa Valley. So, and that's some of the best tasting wine in the world. I mean, I love it, but I have made the decision that I love me more. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Dr. Alexander, I think you might need to make this a weekly show because you have such a plethora of information. It's just beaming out of you. And, and this has been phenomenal. I know we all want more even, but we should talk probably about doing this a little bit more often because this was phenomenal. We've gotten a lot of... um likes a lot of positive feedback they've been great questions thank you so much for taking your time this evening to share it with the atlanta black chambers and myself i see in the chat right here they've mentioned your places to follow you smartplexatl.com smartplexatl on instagram anywhere else and facebook right facebook yes and look for my book it's going to come out what we're going to do is we're going to release the first part of it, it's going to come out in sections. There's going to be some great information. Uh, there's going to be a little political undertone because I'm very upset with the, the, the political system here right now. I hope it doesn't get me in trouble, but if it does, so be it. Um, but we need to start moving in a different direction. We need to start taking care of ourselves. This is ultimately important because I can't take care of you if you don't help me to do so. Right. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. And for those of you who tuned in halfway, just to let you know, this is Dr. Elmore Alexander. He's a biocellular medicine, medicine expert and co-founder of Smartplex ATL. Make sure you follow him. We were taking a holistic approach this evening to fighting Corona. Dr. Alexander, thank you so much. Thank you, Atlanta Black Chamber. Thank you, Chair. You did an awesome job. I really love talking to you. You are very knowledgeable and, um, you make me better. Thank you. <laughs> we make each other better. That is what it's all about. Collaborative effort for the good of the community. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Cherry Garden. Once again, I'm a Jamaican journalist, actress, and media personality living here in Atlanta, Georgia, where Smartplex ATL is. I'm going to go to Smartplex now. Yes. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much. Make sure you share this live. Stay safe, stay strong, and take care of yourselves. Take care.